Five, please. M number 525. Our service for God has been barren and dry, and barren it shall remain until we are blessed with the fire from on high and sound of abundance of rain. We'll stand as we sing and sing with all our hearts. 525, please. Let's stand together. excellent singing. Now let's come before the Lord in a word of prayer together, please. Let's unite our hearts together as we come around the throne of grace. Eternal God and loving Heavenly Father, we do thank Thee and praise Thee for the opportunity to be found in Thy house once again on this Wednesday evening. And we don't take it for granted. We thank Thee that we do have a church to come and gather in our locality We thank Thee even for journeying mercies on the road to be found in our place even tonight. And we pray as we gather as Thy people and as we hear Thy word and as we see this presentation that we may know that God is one of our midst and that our souls have been blessed and our hearts have been touched. We thank Thee for our brother that Thou hast brought along. We thank Thee for his labours for Thee. We thank Thee for his faithfulness over the years in regard to mission work in the denomination. And Lord, we pray that Thou bless him as he brings this presentation tonight. We pray that Thou bless him and his wife and his family and the work in Lurgan that he comes from. And we pray that Thou undertake for the work in Uganda especially. We come before Thee tonight and we especially think about this work that we are going to be reacquainted with again tonight. 
We pray for the Christian school in that land. We pray for our missionaries. We pray for each one that will labour in order to try and win souls. And Lord, we pray that we as a congregation would be uh, people that are continually in prayer over this work. And if we can support this work and that we will be those, even though we may never get to Uganda, even though we may never go to that far off land, still as William Carey often prayed and pleaded, we can hold the ropes and we can do our best at home to support those that have gone on to that front line. But, oh God, we pray that thou bless us tonight, and we pray that as we gather, as we hear the presentation, that we will be blessed in our souls to see that no matter where we think of around the globe, God has his people, and that the Great Commission is being fulfilled of going into all the world and preaching the gospel to every creature. And, oh God, we ask as we sing thy praises, and later on as we come to our time of prayer, that this will be a night of great blessing for thy people in Monish Lane, and that we will be able to leave this place and go to our homes rejoicing, knowing that God has met with his people. But Father, bless us tonight. Undertake for our brother now as he comes. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now at this point in the service, we're going to ask our brother, Mr. John D Domigan, to come along. He's going to be presenting the work of the Emmanuel Christian School in Uganda, and we trust the Lord will bless you, bro, as you come. Well, it's good to be here this evening, and first of all, I would like to thank uh, your minister on the session uh, for the invitation to allow me to come and to bring this deputation meeting tonight on behalf of the Christian uh, Manual School in Uganda. I would like to open your Bibles at Proverbs Place, chapter 4. I, I looked at Mr. Henderson and I was saying, wonder would he notice all these wee things that I have around the pulpit? I thought maybe he would be getting a wee bit worried, but he never looked at them. And, uh, but I'm sure he noticed them. And uh, these are these we, I'll just tell you at the very beginning. They were given to me by Mr. Kelly. As you, some of you would know, by 2004, the work began over in Uganda and, and his wife, Stella. And he gave me these wee toys and he says, John, well, wherever you go, I used to do the early deputation meetings. And they weren't like that we have now. Uh, all this newfangled stuff. And he would give me these wee toys so that I could show to the people. So any ones that I've been doing of lately, uh, I've been putting them on the pulpit and letting the people see. These are wee toys that uh, the children, whenever the school started, you know, sometimes when we see everything going well, we forget about the beginning. So these were the wee t uh, toys that the children, some of them say is baby powder, some of them is. That there is methylated spirits. And it says Uganda, that was these children's toys. And there were the wee dolls that the children played with made. And uh, whenever you see the, the production tonight and see what it began with, you know, we'll be able to lift our hands up to God and say, praise ye the Lord for what he has done. He has done wonderful things in the land of Uganda and especially in Emmanuel Christian School. Proverbs 4. Hear ye children the instructions of a father, and attend to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also and said unto me, let thine heart retain thy words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, 
Get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. And we know of assurance that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his holy and inspired word. My text tonight is not from Proverbs chapter 4, but it is from Psalm 46 and verse 10, a well-known verse. And it tells us, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Just for a moment, just we'll have a wee word of prayer, please. Father in heaven, we pray that I will bless thy word tonight and the presentation that will be brought forth. Lord, we just give thee all the praise and what thou hast done in Uganda thus far. We we'll pray it will continue in such a mighty way that there will be churches grow in that land. So, Father, continue on with us and help me. We we'll pray that we'll all be touched in our hearts tonight. In Jesus' precious name I ask it. Amen. Our teaching tonight is about teaching and learning. So hey, that's a good start. Our teaching tonight is teaching and learning. And the emphasis is on the Christian uh, education. In Proverbs, we have the wise man Solomon. We all know the wisdom of Solomon. Teaching us the importance of being wise. And teaching us in chapter 1 and verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Learning and teaching it begins with knowing God's word. And in our text, we see it begins with be still. Be still. Stillness means quietness and with no distractions. And when Moses and the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they came to the Red Sea. But they had nowhere uh, to go. They, could, they, could, they couldn't get over to the other side. It became hopeless for them. And when they saw Pharaoh and the Egyptian army following close behind, they were so afraid. And they cried unto God to save them. In Exodus 14, verse 13, And Moses said unto the people, Stand still. Stand still. And, and uh, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show unto you this day. Ye shall see them, as it, the Egyptians, no more. And in the stillness of the camp, just imagine it, they're all afraid. Mo God gave Moses instructions, and Moses lifted up his rod and stretched forth his hand and the sea divided. And Moses and the children of Israel crossed to the other side safely. When Pharaoh and his army followed them, and with the stillness in the camp, Moses, under instructions from God, stretched forth his hand, and the seas came back again. Pharaoh and his army were all drowned in the sea. And the children of Israel were able to say, We stood still and saw the salvation of the Lord. It is good for the Christian 
to stand still and to listen for God's instructions as we seek his will to serve him continually. How do we serve him continually? By studying and reading his word and by faith allowing the Holy Ghost to lead us in his service for him. Let us tonight be still and see what God has done in the Emmanuel Christian School, Uganda. In the past, in the present, we're looking into the future as well. This is a, a very important work, and we're looking at it by faith. And uh, we want to be part of this work. And you can, by your continual support in prayer and with finance. I would like to bring you now four short points from my text in Psalm 46 and verse 10 concerning knowledge. This psalm is versatile and can be read in many situations. For Christians, it brings comfort during times of sickness bereavement, trials, problems. And we all have all these things. It teaches us that God is our refuge, our strength, and our help in trouble. It gives us unshakable confidence in God's promises from Holy Scripture. It even prompted Martin Luther to pen one of the greatest hymns of all time. A mighty fortress is our God. The four points are knowing the God of creation, knowing the God of salvation, knowing the God of wise education, knowing the God of intercession. First one is very important. Knowing the God of creation. During my school days, and many is around my same age, it would say that the same we had Christian assemblies and were taught that according to the Bible, God in six days created a heaven and earth. It speaks of the light, of the firmament, of the earth separated from the waters and made fruitful. The creation of the sun, moon and stars, of fish and of fowl, of beasts and cattle, creation of man in the image of God and its blessing and then the appointment of food and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made and rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. A great example for us as Christians we all must we must remember that. I think this is a God, one of God's commands that is really we are forgetting about. We should remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And it's a day of rest, and we can rest our bodies. Only old clay we need a rest. And we need fed on God's word. It's a day of learning. And for some, like Mr. Henderson, for teaching, and it is a blessed time. I know I love, I look forward to the Lord's day. The last to be created, of course, was man. And uh, I think the reason is, that is so that no flesh could take the glory away from God. And that's a very important point, I believe. To us adults, this doctrine of creation may seem to, well, not uh, to be too much important. But this is where we make the mistake. But the children, it is because it is simple to them and they will not forget it because the proof is all around them. They can see with their eyes whether it is in the universe and can see and touch with their hands the things of earth. Christians know creation by faith which cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Today, most people, including children, do not accept this doctrine. Some only accept parts of it. 
TV, television, mostly, nearly all of it, rejects creation. And the television and the media and all these things are going in to the minds and hearts of our children. You know, we should be concerned about the children, about television, and how wicked it is, and sending all these things, 16s, and then they go, used to be in my days, and maybe with 10 or 20 million, but now they're way up to 120 millions and things. They're just taking it off. And why is that happening? I believe because there is an ignorance to the doctor, and people are forgetting the big doctor. I, know. I, came, I was under uh, the preaching for 36 years of the Reverend David Crane, and we learned doctrines every Lord's Day and in, a, in our prayer meeting. And you know, they always stick to you, no matter where you go, they always come in uh, to your mind. People are ignorant to the doctrine of God's creation simply because it is not taught in our mainstream education, in our schools, in our homes. Evolution is taught in many schools and colleges and homes, and of course, again, the television. I worked in, uh, still do a wee bit for them, in the Educational Authority. Uh, and uh, even the times when uh, there was uh, taught, creation was taught in the schools. But even over, and that was in 1995, but now, it's over the last 20 odd years, it has just got down and no teaching at all. And this is why I pray for our missionaries who bring the gospel into the schools, our home missionaries. Some teachers are checked, even persecuted, for teaching God's creation to the boys and girls and to the young people. God's creation is a foundation to know and to teach the Holy Scriptures, the Bible. It needs to be known. It needs to be taught in our schools, churches, and in our homes where it begins. And in our conversations. Even when you go out, when you're walking up the street, maybe tomorrow, or up, up the road, and uh, you see somebody. Somebody fairly said, not a lovely day. Isn't God good? And he sent us a lovely day. Or even if it was snowing. It's not a lovely day. Look at the lovely white snow there is all over the place. It's not a lovely God's creation. No matter what it is, God has blessed it. It's good to talk about it in our conversation. And then secondly is knowing the God of salvation. Adam and Eve had perfect communion with God. Adam had only one commandment eh, to, to keep to have eternal life. And break, breaking God's command would bring forth death. So Adam, we all know, broke God's word and ate the forbidden uh, fruit. And because, therefore, the Bible tells us, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. The greatest teacher on earth was the Lord Jesus Christ. We see in John chapter 3 in his discourse with Nicodemus, a Jewish reader who accepted Jesus was a teacher sent from God. And Jesus said to him personally, accept a man who be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that has been born of the spirit is a spirit. And in those great two verses in the scripture, I always like to bring these two verses together now. Uh, we all know John 3 and verse 16 uh, and verse 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And God sent not a Son into the world to condemn the world, but, but the world through him might be saved. There we have the gospel in a nutshell. We have the foundation of God's salvation. Christ's love for lost sinners, his virgin birth, his sinless life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension into heaven. And there he is now interceding for us, his people, and willing to save precious souls, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Ephesians 2 verse 8, 
we have that wonderful verse. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. We need to teach children this doctrine of God's salvation early in life with the desire to see them saved. This is why the gospel of Jesus Christ is taught in all the children in the Emmanuel Christian School. And then thirdly, we have knowing the God of wise education. In Proverbs 9 and 19, <coughs> the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. By understanding has he established the heavens. God is a great God of all wisdom. And he gives to you all words of great wisdom and understanding. How? Through the Bible. Through his word right down history. All parents want good education uh, for the children. But we know from experience that children have different, uh, le different levels in learning. And it is important to teach children to their ability. This is something that is very important, especially when you're teaching. Using the wisdom God has given us. I remember when I was in school, and I went to Bonbridge Technical College, if there had been a degree in horse racing, I would have got it, no problem at all. But there was none. And I, uh, I just had to struggle on in life. But uh, and if I was to turn the back, clock back, I would definitely would learn more. I'm sure you're all in the same boat. When we're young, we, you just cannot see. We haven't got the mindset uh, to think into the future. In our reading tonight from Proverbs 4 about wisdom and understanding, parents and teachers are encouraged when they see their children and pupils progress in their schooling and getting good results in their exams and leaving the school with good prospects into the world of work and the world of life. Note that wisdom is transmitted by personal influence. We know that. People can influence children. And maybe that same person might influence other children. But uh, teaching by parents, teaching by teachers, they can be influenced. That, w and that is why we need to maintain the best level of education, teaching possible. And at all the staff, and speaking of Emmanuel Christian School now, and for all the staff, that there will be a great influence, an example to all the pupils. And this is what's happening today. And the people are being influenced. And they are beginning to learn more. And the results are getting good. And the Lord has really blessed them. We see in, uh, in the school, they're happy children. You see it tonight. Happy children. Grateful for the opportunity to listen in primary classes, secondary classes, and for the older ones, vocational classes, such as mechanics and dressmaking. Then finally, we have the one knowing God of intercession. But this man tells us in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 24 and 25. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for us. We all know that. When we get down to pray, we know we see God the Father. We see God the Son on his right hand. We don't see through our eyes. We don't need glasses to see them. We come through faith, knowing and believing that he is there. It is important to teach the children about prayer. Remember the disciples just felt as if they were children. And they asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his uh, disciples to pray. 
And it is the mission uh, board and missionary council responsibility to bring to our churches the great need to pray for all our missionary work and workers around the world. But tonight, our focus is on Emmanuel Christian School. This is a great opportunity for our presbytery, our mission board, churches and individuals to get involved in teaching of these boys and girls in the Emmanuel uh, Christian School. There are many needs uh, to be met, both physical, educational, finance and spiritual. Our main object of all, remember man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever, is to glorify God <laughs> and bring to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're not doing it because of a denomination. We're doing it because God saved us and gave us a desire in our hearts. And we want to see men and women and boys and girls, it didn't matter what part of the country, what, uh, what creed or, or, or what color their skin. We must bring the gospel to them and give them every opportunity, even in life. If you, anyone, would like to help in this work. I have with me these wee prayer cards. And just take one. And you see on the, on the side of it says uh, wee boxes to tick. And I would like to, uh, to support the Emmanuel Christian School. You just put a wee tick and you send it off uh, to the Mason Board office in uh, Kilkeel, to Glenda. And other Wise, you could text her, you could uh, ring her and say you're interested to help in this work. We also have a wee leaflet, a manual Christian school. And it tells you, uh, it just shows you wee pictures of it and it keeps your mind alert on it. And then if you wish to uh, sponsor a child, churches do it. Uh, and uh, individual people do it, families do it, Sunday schools do it, and uh, you're able to sponsor uh, a child on uh, that, that school. Now I'm going to come uh, to showing to you this video. And once again, I want you to keep in your minds, have a wee look up at these here, and keep it in your minds. And you'll see the wonders of our God, what our God can do. We just give him all the praise. We are just his servants. We are just his workers. And I do pray that the Lord will really bless uh, this presentation. Uh, we have in, uh, in Uganda three presentations out at the moment. I've been doing some lately uh, uh, for... Uh, for Noreen McAfee, and it was for her. And then uh, there's uh, the Cascadens who will be going out uh, this year, God willing, out there uh, to take charge of the church. And uh, then there's this one here as well. So there's much to help and there's much to pray for. The Lord is really blessed. And there's a great scope out there in the land of Uganda. All right, brother. Over to you now. One of the great pioneer missionaries to Uganda in the 19th century was the Scotchman uh, Murdoch Mackay. The last article that he wrote before his sudden death was on the vital question of how is Africa uh, to be evangelized. One answer uh, to that vital question is to reach the children of that vast continent with the message of the gospel. And in recent years, the Lord has opened to us in the mission board 
a great door of opportunity uh, to reach especially the children of Uganda with the message of the gospel. Uganda is a landlocked country with a tropical climate that sits right on the equator in East Africa. Winston Churchill described it as the Pearl of Africa. It is a very significant fact that Uganda has the world's youngest population, with 50% of its nearly 50 million citizens being under the age of 14. In 2014, a door opened for the mission board to take over the witness at the Emmanuel Mission Station. And the Lord's work there at Emmanuel includes the ministry of both the church and the Christian school. Our primary objective is to see a strong church established in the area. And the Emmanuel Church is a busy outreach center. The main meetings on a Sunday are a Lord's Day morning service the afternoon Sunday school, the afternoon outreach to two local prisons, and the evening fellowship hour. There is also a midweek prayer meeting and Bible study, and a weekly open air outreach to one of ten local towns or villages, at which gospel literature is also distributed. During the main school holidays, two vacation Bible schools are also held to bring the gospel to children in the local area. It is our desire through all these activities that the souls of many Ugandans will be won to Christ and then develop spiritually in their walk with God. We have also a vision to see other churches and Sunday schools planted in the local area and throughout Uganda. In addition, we have a burden to train young Ugandans who have shown a desire to serve the Lord and to send them forth to preach the gospel. The Emmanuel School was started in 2004 with just 16 children. But the Lord has blessed the work in a remarkable way. And now there is over 450 children enrolled at the school. There is over 120 children in the nursery department, over 275 children in the primary school and 80 young people in the secondary school. A very significant step forward for the Emmanuel School in 2021 was that our application for primary school registration was granted. At present, we are working through the processes for nursery school registration and secondary school licensing. Please pray that the Lord will prosper both of these applications. The NGO certificate must be renewed every five years and we currently have an application for renewal before the NGO board. Please pray that it will be accepted. In answer to prayer, the Lord faithfully provided the missionary personnel needed for this work. The mission board is very thankful to all who have laboured at Emmanuel in the early years of our ministry there to help establish the work, both spiritually and practically. After 17 years of dedicated service in Kenya, Miss Noreen McAfee felt called uh, to move to Emmanuel to take up the role of principal. Miss McAfee has a great responsibility, overseeing all three departments of the school and the work of our nearly 40 members of staff. It was very hard to leave Kenya, but I knew in my heart that the Lord was leading me to Uganda. 
I had already visited Emmanuel a couple of times, so I had some idea of the work that lay ahead. In some respects, school is school wherever you go, but of course each situation is unique. You have new missionaries, new staff, new parents and new pupils to meet. And the Lord has graciously added to each of these groups in the past few years. At Emmanuel, we largely follow the national curriculum for Uganda, which offers maths, English, science, RE and social studies at primary level. The secondary and social studies are then divided into individual subjects when the students move into the secondary department. A typical day starts with morning assembly at 7.30 and classes begin at 8 and run through until 4.30 when we have our afternoon assembly. It's a long day but it's broken up with a cup of maize porridge at morning break and some maize, beans and cabbage for lunch with meat and fruit on certain days. The school feeding program is a real lifeline for the children since food is scarce in many homes. On Saturdays we have morning lessons and then some chores and sports sessions to enjoy. While most of our students are day scholars, we do have over 90 in the boarding department. They are mostly older children in the examination classes, but we also have some who come from a distance or from very difficult home situations. They stay with us throughout the term and then we organise for them to go to a home for the holidays, even if that means giving support to the household. Most of our families could only afford a small contribution towards the cost of the child's education and some can pay nothing at all. Many need assistance with items such as stationery, uniform and boarding supplies too as we try to teach them some basic hygiene. Sickness is never far away and often we have to step in to see that our children and others in the community get the medical care and attention they need. That is the reality of working in a poor and needy area. We are grateful to all who give us both prayerful and practical support. We really couldn't do it without you and we trust that the Lord will reward you abundantly. We're also grateful to the Lord for his grace and mercy in every aspect of school life. We've been able to appoint head teachers for both the primary and secondary departments and a social worker for our orphaned and vulnerable children's program. We've also appointed a school management committee with representatives of the mission board, school staff, parents and local community. There is still much work to be done, but whatever has been accomplished is undoubtedly the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. It is a definite answer to prayer that the Lord has called the Reverend Ray Kerskadon to take up the ministry in the Emmanuel Church. He is currently engaged in deputation work around our churches. Please pray for the Kerskadden family that the necessary finances will be raised for their support and that they will know the Lord's help and blessing in all their preparations to go to labour in Uganda. A number of practical improvements have been made to the school facilities including the drilling of a bore well to provide clean drinking water for the staff and children. A play park was also erected to give the children some recreational facilities at break times. As a result of the generosity of the Lord's people, from time to time we are able to provide some special gifts for the children. These gifts include clothes, shoes and boots, sports equipment and sports kits. As road conditions can often be difficult and treacherous, good and reliable vehicles are essential. But in 2019, it became evident to the board that an additional new vehicle was required. And through the generous giving of many believers, 
a new Toyota Hilux was purchased. To all who contributed so liberally to this appeal, we want to express our sincere thanks. There are two main villages in the area around the mission station. These are Nisalu and Chimbala, with a total of approximately 600 families. Most of these people are very poor, and we want to help them practically as much as possible. As a result of a missionary council project in 2019, a community bore well was provided for each of these villages. The wells were dedicated at special services that were used as a means of outreach to the local community. At the Emmanuel Mission Station, we also run a small Orphans and Vulnerable Children, or OVC, program. Each year, with the help of our social worker, we identify the 10 families in greatest need in the community and provide them with seed, fertilizer, basic equipment, and some training to help them grow a number of crops so that they can be more independent in the support of their family. A big challenge that we were presented with was to produce gospel literature in the Luganda language. Luganda is the main language spoken in the area around Emmanuel by approximately eight and a half million people. During the COVID lockdown, three of our secondary school teachers devoted a lot of time to translation work for us. They translated all five of the Mission Board's children's tracks. Dr. Alan Kearns' greatly used booklet, A New Beginning, and a new adult tract entitled Stop Trying to Save Yourself. A further tract has since been translated with the title What the Quran Says About Jesus Christ. All of this literature has been shipped to Uganda, along with 5,000 copies of John's Gospel in Uganda, supplied by Every Home Crusade, and a large quantity of Gospel tracts in English. The translation and printing of literature into the Luganda language is a project that will be ongoing continually into the future. This literature is of great help to our missionaries in their outreach program in the local area. As you can see, a tremendous amount has been accomplished with your help and support in a very short space of time. And we want to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to everyone who has helped us to advance the cause of the gospel at Emmanuel. To those who have gone to supply the pulpit, and also those who have been part of the various work teams, to install the solar power, to renovate the missionary accommodation, to build the toilet block, to help install the water harvesting, and who have been involved in installing the mains electric, also to several of our churches that have financed various vital projects. We thank you all sincerely for laboring with us. Now, as we look to the future, we have a great vision, a vision to see every area of the work expanded and developed. Let me stress that we need your help as we seek to continue this great ministry in the future. First and foremost, we need your prayers. Let me ask you to pray for our missionaries and staff and for all that goes on at both the Emmanuel Church and school. Also pray for me as the chairman of the Ugandan Oversight Subcommittee and all the members of that committee who give so much of their time to labor along with the board to advance the Lord's work in Uganda. The work at Emmanuel is great. There is the supporting of our missionaries, overseeing all the activities of the church, 
the welfare of our nearly 40 members of staff and over 450 children, the management of the Ugandan NGO and providing practical help for the local community. For all of these responsibilities and more, we need your earnest prayers for the Lord's direction and provision. Prayer cards are available. Please take one to remind you to pray for the work at Emmanuel. It takes over £2,000 per week to keep the Emmanuel School running. Therefore, we also earnestly appeal for your financial support. Gifts can be given through offerings at deputation meetings. Also, gifts can be sent directly to our mission board office. Flyers have been printed with all the details of where to send your donation. In addition, gifts can now be given by using the donate button on the mission board website. One vital way that you can help to support the work of the school is through our child sponsorship program. It costs £140 per year to sponsor one child. Many individuals, churches, Sunday schools, children's meetings, youth fellowships, ladies meetings and even businesses are sponsoring children at Emmanuel. This sponsorship makes a massive difference to the lives of the children. An annual sponsorship newsletter is sent to all our sponsors to bring them updates of how their support has benefited the children. To sponsors who have an email address, we can also send a short thank you video that lets you see how your sponsorship is helping the children at Emmanuel. In Uganda, secondary education is a right, but it is not required by law. And because of the extreme poverty of many homes and the great demand to help provide the daily necessities for their family, many young people must go out into the workplace after finishing primary school. In order to help some of these young people to get a good start in life, we run an apprenticeship program. Each year, five young people are carefully selected for this program and given financial help to serve their time at such trades as mechanicking and dressmaking. To support one of these children costs approximately £530 per year. We also provide a bursary to the top two students who have completed their O-levels to allow them to go on to do their A-levels or a vocational course, whichever they prefer. A few of these young people have chosen to do the nursing and midwifery course. The bursary costs approximately £650 per child per year. Because of your support, much has been done for the Lord in Uganda. The witness of a church is being maintained, a whole community is being evangelized and educated, gospel literature has been printed, facilities have been improved, the community has been supported. But much more remains to be done. Therefore, in closing, as you consider the work at Emmanuel, let me exhort you all, in the words of the Saviour, to lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest.